Hi and welcome to this DCP Web Blender 2.8 Cloth Simulation Beginners Tutorial. So in today's tutorial, we're going to create a simulation similar to this. So this material will float down, land on this text, and then it will get pulled away, showing the text something like this. We'll watch it one more time. Let's just click play. And we should get a result similar to this one. So let's go ahead and open up Blender. And we'll quickly go to File, Save As. And I'm just going to give it a name. I'm just going to call it Cloth-01. And we'll save that. We'll click on the cube and delete it. If you've not used Blender before, you can check uh, the link in the YouTube description to a beginner's tutorial. I'll advise you go through that first if you haven't used Blender before. So we'll delete the cube first. So we'll hit the delete key. We'll press Shift A and insert a plane. And we want to scale this plane on the X and the Y only. So we're going to press S to scale and then Shift key and Z. And then we're going to type in 20 to 0. And that will scale it up by 20 on the X and the Y axis only. So you can see that here on the X and Y it's been scaled by 20. And then we want to add our text. So let's press Shift A and we'll go to text here. So here we can see our text objects. Let's just rotate around and zoom in a little bit. We'll press the tab key on our keyboard. The tab key allows us to go from object mode to edit mode. So we're going to go into edit mode with the tab key and we'll type in, you can type in anything you like. I'm going to type in DCP web. We'll press the tab key to go back into object mode and we'll go to the object data here. And we need to download a font quickly. So let's just open up the web browser and we'll go to this website. I'll put a link to this website in the YouTube description and then you can pick any font you like. Um, I think normally I use this font here in my tutorials. I'm going to try this one out today. Uh, so in fact, I'll use the same one. Let's just use the same font. I use this one here. So I'm just going to drag and drop that into this folder and then close down the browser. We'll open up this folder, we'll right click here and extract the font. And then we'll delete this zip file and we'll rename this to font. And we'll delete this, uh, so we're just left with the font now. Let's go back to Blender. With our font selected, we're inside the object data here. We're gonna go to font and then open up this folder and go to the font here and then select this text or this, this, uh, this font here and click open and we can see our font has been changed. We'll set the size to two. And then we're going to set the character spacing to 1.1 here. Then we'll go to, let's just, uh, let's just zoom out a little bit so we can see it. Then uh, let's go to geometry and we set the extrusion to 0 0.2 here, 0 0.2. Then we'll go to Object, Set Origin, Geometry to Origin here. That will center it out on the cursor here. And then we need to press number three on our keyboard. And number three will take us to write orthographic. And we can zoom in a little bit here and click on the Move tool. And then we just want to drag this text so that it sits a little bit above like, uh, let's say about something like, uh, one box should be fine. So we're like we're almost with like one box here above this green line. Then we can middle mouse click and rotate around and we'll see our text here. Then with the text already selected, so we click on this drop down here, you'll see we've got a camera, light, plane, and text. The plane, let's double click on that and let's give it a sensible name. Let's call it floor. Then we've got our text here. Let's click on the text and we'll go to object convert to a mesh object here. Then we're going to press the tab key that takes us into edit mode and we're going to press the letter A and A will select this whole object and we go to mesh and then we'll go to um, clean up and we'll do remove doubles here and then press the letter A again. Sorry, just go to edit an object or you can just press tab, press tab key to go back into object mode. Okay, 
let's go file save and then we're going to press number seven on the keyboard number seven takes us into top view and we want to press uh, control alt and then zero control alt and zero and that moves the camera into the top view so the camera sees what we can see now this black box is the camera and that's what the camera can see and you can see the text is sitting outside so we want to move the camera a little bit so we click on the camera here and we'll go to the object data here object data here and on the z-axis we just want to move it out so that we've got at least a, a sensible gap on the side here and here something like that's what we want to see let's go to file save and now we need to add the uh, the material that's going to float down on top of it so let's press shift a and we go to mesh and plane and with this plane we want to scale it on the x-axis so we're going to press s to scale and then press x and then we're going to scale it out so that it's wider than the, what the camera can see because we want it to go a bit off of the camera view so something like this so it sits outside of the camera view here you can see on both sides and then we want to scale it on the height and the height is going to be the green axis which is the y axis so press s to scale and then y and then we're going to scale it out to something like this so there's a gap at the top and a gap at the bottom and they should all be equal something like this yeah so let's go to file save and now uh, we want to go to edit mode so make sure the plane is selected and we're going to go into edit mode so you should see it all orange like this the plane um, and then we're going to go to let's see edge here and then subdivide we're going to do it once we're going to do it twice we're going to do it three times four times and then finally five times so we're going to subdivide five times and you'll see all these little boxes and those represent the subdivision right so now it's been subdivided into all of these uh, segments you could say so we need to press the letter a twice quite quickly press it twice so press a twice and that will unselect everything if you press a on its own once it will select everything and a twice quickly will unselect everything so press a twice that's going to unselect everything and we just want to select these vertices here down the side here all of them yeah just on this side here then we'll go to the object data here and in the vertex group we're going to click the plus sign and we're going to name this group uh, selected edge just call it selected edge or something like this and then click the assign button afterwards assign and then go back to object mode now um, what we want to do is let's see this plane here we want to rename it so click on plane double click on it and call it uh, let's call it uh, let me think what am I going to call it I'm gonna, let's call it cloth cloth material so we'll call it cloth material let's click on the floor so we've got the floor here click on it then go to the physics and select collision then go to the text and also select collision here so you need to go to physics and collision then go to the cloth material and select cloth here inside the physics tab right cloth here then in the quality steps we'll set it to 8 for now and on the end frame here down here we want to set it to 100 for the minute just set it to 100 100 and then in the shape here we want to select the edge selected or selected edge group that we created the ping for the ping group here and then in collision we want to set it to five for now and pretty much everything else can stay the same the one thing we need to do is move this material uh, above the text so let's press number three on our keyboard that takes us into the right orthographic and we'll click on the cloth material and drag it so that it's above the text uh, something like around around here should be okay you don't want it too far away something like this so it's almost like one box away like one of these big gray boxes 
but that distance away. Then we'll go back to the uh, camera view. So we press number zero on our keyboard. That takes us back to the camera view. Let's go to file save and then we'll go to the cache setting. So click on the cloth material, go to the physics and then go to the cache here and click uh, in here. You have to set it to 100 as well. So set the end, end of the bake to 100 and click bake or dynamics. This will take a few seconds to do. And let's test it. Let's click the play button. And now we can see this uh, cloth uh, is going backwards. One minute. Let's go to the first frame, click play. And now we can see it's been pinned here, so it doesn't fall here, but it will fall over the text. And we can smooth shade it and do some surface subdivision afterwards to improve how this material looks when it hits the, the text below it. So let's press zero on our keyboard. That takes us to the camera view. We pause it and go back and let's see. So we're going to run it at 30 frames a second. So 30, 60, 90, that would be three seconds. So that should be enough up until 90 seconds. And then from 90 to like around 140, we're going to, we want to grab this material and pull it to the side. So Let's set our end frame for the minute to 140. And what we'll do is, um, let's think, let's save this for the minute. And let's go back to the first frame. We need to move this material and we need to grab it. So the way that we're gonna grab it is we're gonna insert some uh, armatures on this material and then we use the armatures to move the material. So to do that, um, What's the best way to do this? Let's click on the uh, camera here. And then we need to, so when you click on the camera, it's come out of camera view and then we need to press number seven. Number seven will take us now into top orthographic. You should see top orthographic here. And basically what you're looking at is, um, is um, the objects but flattened out. Think of it that way, right? And this is our material here highlighted in yellow and we want to press shift a so press shift a and we want to insert an armature bone here single bone so you can't really see that but what we're going to do is drag it to the right or to the left should i say and we'll zoom in a little bit here and we can use the shift key and the middle mouse button to pan across and we want to grab this and put this bone right in this corner here we going to have it right in the corner over here. Now it looks like it's in the corner, but it's not quiet. So we need to press number three and we can see it from underneath. Uh, let's click on the cloth material. Here's the cloth material, right? And we want to move this bone upwards. So let's see if we go into wireframe, it's better to do this in wireframe mode here because you can actually see the material right here. You can see the bone here. We want to drag this so that it sits on top of the material here. So let me zoom in a little bit and show you. So let's just bring it down a little bit. So it's sitting right on this corner, right? Here. So if we press um, number seven again and then zoom out, we'll see that it's right on the corner here. So we want to zoom out a little bit more so we can see this bone here in the corner and we want to put one in the top corner here as well. So let's go to file save and we're going to go to object and then edit mode here. And what we need to do, uh, let's see. Let's zoom in a little bit here. We need to make sure we click on the bone on the side here, right? So don't click in the middle, click on the side here, around here somewhere. Let me just see. Yeah, that should be fine. So let's press seven. So make sure you click around somewhere around the edge here somewhere. So when you click on it, it should highlight yellow like a square like this or orange. And then we want to press shift key and D shift D and then hit the enter key. Then you want to go to the move tool and just drag this second bone to the other corner over here. 
and then we want to go back to object mode here so we've got these two bones and we're going to use those to pull the material to the side and what we need to do now is click on the cloth material here right here click on it once with the left mouse button hold down the shift key on your keyboard and then click on the armature here so you must click the cloth material first then hold down the shift key and then click the armature afterwards holding down the shift key so both of them are selected you'll see that the cloth material should be orange and then the armatures will be yellow with surrounding yellow boxes like this then we're going to press Control and P Control P and then we're going to select set parent to with automatic weights here click that and then we will go to uh, let's see we'll click on the armature here let's go to file save and we need to go back into camera view so click camera view here so we can see what the camera sees and we need to zoom out a little bit we need to be a bit further out and we baked the first like 100 frames right so as we scrub through this we see the first 100 frames and it's going to stop at frame 100 so on frame 100 we don't really want to do anything with these this armature so we're going to go to frame 1 uh, we're going to click this record button here and we're going to select the armature and we're going to press inside of the screen here we'll move our mouse cursor press the letter i letter i on our keyboard to insert a location rotation and scale so we set that then we're going to go all the way to frame 100 and do the same again so press i insert location rotation and scale here then we're going to move to frame 100 what did we want that's one second 100 130 would be one second so we're going to go to about 150. so let's set this end frame to 150 and on a frame 150 uh, we're going to click on the move tool to make sure the move tool is selected and we're going to drag these bones to around here that should be good enough because that's going to move this material off of the text we we'll click the record button here and then we'll go back to the first frame let's go to file save and let's go to our render view here Let's zoom in a little bit <clears throat> and then we're going to go back to the cloth material here and we're going to free the bake so free the bake here and we're going to bake to 150 frames right so we need to set the end frame here to 150 and then we're going to click uh, bake or dynamics and this will take a little bit longer And then we'll click play. And now we can see that those bones are going to move this material off of the text like this. So you can set it to a longer duration or a shorter duration. If you want it to reveal more slowly, then you need to just make more keyframes or more frames and set the uh, end frame to a longer value, right? So it moves slowly, more slower off of the text. But I think this will be okay for our test example. Something like this should be fine. So let's go back to the first frame and let's go file, save. And let's sort out some lighting. So we're going to go to this website. I'll put a link to this website in the YouTube description. And we're going to go to this page here on HDRI Haven. You can experiment with these uh, HDRI um, lighting maps here, but I'm going to click on this particular one. I'll put a link to this particular one and we'll click on the 4K download 25 megabytes here. And while that's downloading, I'm going to open up this folder, create a new folder and call it HDRI. And we'll drag and drop that into here. We'll close this. And we'll go back to Blender. Let's just go to File, Save. And the first thing we want to do is click on this floor. So click on the floor or click floor here. And then go to the material here. And then click New Material. 
and then for now set the base color to black you can actually set it to any color you want i'm going to set it to black in my example you can experiment with these colors afterwards and we want to now go to the uh let's see it'll be easier to do this if we this cloth material let's click on it for now and we'll go to new and in the base color i'm going to make it like a sort of gold color right you can see it's almost like a gold color here you in my in my first example i made it sort of silver but in this example i want to make it gold you can, it's entirely your choice what colors you choose right so i'm going to make it gold like this and um the metallic and all these other settings we're going to come back to and play around with them afterwards and then we need to hide the cloth material for the minute so we need to click on this eye and that will hide the cloth material from the viewport just so that we can click on the text here and we can give that a material and the text i'm going to make uh, like a silver sort of gray silver color and we'll sort out the lighting for the text and everything else in a moment so we've got gray text let's turn on the cloth material again we've got gold material cloth and a black background for now we'll play around with these uh settings in a moment let's go to the world setting here world and we'll click use notes and then we want to go up to the shading here and let's go to file save and in this op right now in this material in the shading editor um, we're looking at the cloth material right because it's selected so we want to go to object and we want to go to weld here so make sure you select weld here and this background and we've got an output here so let me try and zoom into these a little bit so this is the work this is the output and this is the background we want to delete the background and then press so click on it basically click on it and then hit the delete the uh, delete key then press shift a and we want to insert a texture environmental texture here then click connect the color to the surface here and then click open and we're going to go to the hdr folder and select that hdr lounge image that we downloaded and click open and then we can click on the uh, material we can click on the render view here render view and we can see what that material is going to look like and we can't really see the text too well because it's covered by this material so let's go back to the layout here and let's hide the uh, material for now so we just hide it and let's just look at this text and what we want to do let's click on the uh, the text for the minute and we want to go to the render settings here we can turn on bloom you don't have to turn on bloom but we're going to turn on bloom and give it a little sort of glow around the edge and then screen space reflections we need to turn on as well here we might play around with this Let's turn on refractions as well we might play around with these settings here a little bit to see if we can improve um, our material and stuff afterwards let's go to the material for the text itself and we want to increase the metallic so it looks more like a metal sort of silver metal text right like this um specular we can just leave that we don't really need to do anything so I'll just turn i just turn the metallic all the way to the top just turn it all the way to the top and it will look more like metal text let's just go back to the render settings and turn off bloom i think we might we might leave that off actually i think it will look better without the bloom um while we're in this um viewport while we're in the render settings here let's set the viewport samples to 120 and we set the render samples to 120 as well for now and that would just improve what we see in the viewport so we can get a better sort of judgment of what it's looking like so if we click on the floor uh, the floor here and go to that material then um, we can either increase or decrease the metallic to get rid of this shine or keep it and we want to just tone that down a little bit I think uh, we don't really want it to be this is all down to you now to really experiment see what you how you want it to look um, 
I want a little bit of reflection off of there and we're going to probably move this text to an angle at the end so we see some of this sort of reflection underneath some of the shadows and stuff like this really the I don't think we need I don't really want this this light source so the light source let's just click on it and for now we'll turn it off in the let's just go to the top here in fact we might leave it on let's turn it into a sun lamp and we'll reduce the energy probably need a little bit of light in there just to improve the text so what I've done is I clicked on the light source and turned it into just reduce the energy basically set it to about one here and that would just if we turn it off right we can see what it looks like on and off so it's up to you you can either have it on or off it's entirely your choice but I've just turned the default light into a sun lamp and then set the energy to one and that's pretty much about it I haven't touched it otherwise so just pointing at this particular angle and it will just help us with our text a little bit here okay so let's press zero on our keyboard zero so we can roughly see what the camera is going to see now when the text is revealed let's um, turn back on the cloth so let's turn it on so we can see the cloth material and let's move across a bit to around frame let's say frame I'm going to go to around frame 80. I want to see some of the creases and stuff, right? And we go to the cloth material. And then I'm going to turn up the metallic. I'm going to turn up the metallic. And the specular, I'm just going to leave that pretty much alone. And then I'm going to bring down the roughness to something like this. And then I'm going to go to um, the modifier here. So make sure the cloth is selected and go to the modifier. And then go to add modifier and we're going to surface uh, subdivision surface here. And then we're going to set this to around, let's see in the viewport. We're going to set it to three and then in the render we're going to set it to three as well. And then we're also going to go to object and select shade smooth here so this is kind of like some gold material now right you'll notice that um it might slow down a little bit the uh, when we play it let's have a look it's looking pretty good so you can pause on like a frame like this and then you can go back to the cloth and go to the material and you can change the roughness to just give it a different type of um, effect you can have it like fully rough or if you want like loads of reflections and stuff I'm going to set it to something like this looks like this looks pretty good for me and you can go into the render here as well and you can change the screen space reflection in here you can change the settings um, you just got to play around with it really to see you know, you can turn these off so you won't get them highlights in there. You've got to play around with it to see how you want it to look. This is really down for you to experiment now. So I think that'll be okay. It's quite different to the first one I did, but, you know, let's not make something exactly the same twice over. Let's do something a bit different. Uh, let's hide the uh, cloth material because I'm not really liking this text too much so let's go to its material and maybe we'll bring down that roughness to try and get some let's press zero so I'm gonna probably I might even change the color of the text. I'm not really liking this sort of color, so let's see. I'm 
I might go for like this blue colour. I think that looks a lot better. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna stick with blue. Um and then the floor you can change that colour as well. You can click on the floor. And if you want to change the colour of that, you can just turn it back up. Change it to a different colour if you want. You can play around with the settings. I'll leave it for you to experiment. I'm leaving mine quite dark. I'm just going to pretty much leave every, all the settings as they are. And then let's turn back on the cloth. In fact, we'll, yeah, let's turn back on the cloth material. Let's just run through that. So that's what it's going to look like. It's going to reveal this text. Uh, it finishes reveal, revealing what well, this animation really is done by about frame 140. It's off the camera. So on this frame here, what we'll do is we'll set it to, let's see, 140, 1020, that's two, that's one second. So probably about 190. So we're gonna set it to 190 here. Set the end frame to 190. And we'll go back to the uh, first frame. Where was we? We was on the 140, frame 140. So we'll go back to the first frame. Uh, what's going on here? Let me just go file save. I seem to have lost my Okay, that's back. I think there's a little bug there in Blender. I thought I lost my HDR lighting, but it's there. Okay, let's save this. Let's press zero. Uh, so on a frame 140, we want to do something with the text, like I'll move the camera. That's what we want to do. So to do that, let's just um, remember 140. Let's go back to the first frame. Uh, we'll click on the text here and we'll press I insert. In fact, it's not the text we want to move, it's the camera. So let's click on the camera here. And we'll press I to insert a location, rotation, and scale. We'll move to frame 140. We'll press I to insert a location, rotation, and scale here. Then we'll move to frame 185. Normally I leave a few still frames at the end. So let's say frame 185. And we'll go to the camera. We'll press um, N on our keyboard. So press the letter N. And then we'll do camera, lock camera to view. And we're just going to rotate this text around to something that we like. Probably around here should be fine. I'm going to press F12 to render it just to see what that frame looks like. So for some reason, okay, we need to press the record button here. I didn't press the record button. So I need to press I to insert a location, rotation, and scale. If you don't press the record button, it won't record what you're doing. So now it should move, right? It's going to move like this. So that should be fine. Let's go to File, Save. We'll untick the record button. Go back to the first frame. Let's just give it one quick play. go to our last frame and press F12 so we can see what our text looks like could have been a bit brighter but I think it's okay you can now go and experiment and play around with the the color settings and the lighting and stuff and if you want to improve it you can make changes yourself you can do whatever you need I'm gonna to go to file save and we're pretty much done so let's go to our output here the first frame is one the last frame is 990 that's fine we'll set it to 16 bit color and we're going to do avi jpeg and we just set it to a hundred percent here and we'll go to the folder 
desktop and we'll go into this folder here and we'll just click accept and then we'll press Control and F12. Now Blender will create each frame and it will create a video clip afterwards. So I'll pause the video, wait for this to finish and then we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so Blender's finished rendering out the 190 frames. We can close this and go to File, Save. And then we can close that in Blender. And inside our folder, we'll have this new AVI file. And we can open it up and we can see the result. So let's just set it to repeat a few times. And we can see what we think. So probably what I would have done is um, to improve this. I would have probably ended on this sort of angle on the text rather than having it go to a dark. Left it on sort of more of a lighter angle. I might add another light source to uh, reflect against that text. But overall I like the gold effects. Come out pretty well. So that's the gold version and using that same logic we can create the silver version as well so they're both using the same logic just different colored text and different color material for the uh, for the cloth itself so hope you find that tutorial useful that's just a beginner's guide to using cloth simulation in blender 2.8 and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.